So welcome everyone. And uh, now we're going to have uh, the cross-regional session in which uh, Wikimedians from the CE region will meet with uh, African Wikimedians. As you know, uh, the Wikimedia CE online meeting and Wikimdava take place during the same weekend. So we decided to collaborate on holding a session in which people from both regions we have a chance to uh, meet with each other to exchange uh, knowledge and experiences so that they continue their work with uh, more insights of what people in other regions of the uh, Wikimedia movement work. Uh, today's theme is uh, going to concentrate on community and strategy. We have two speakers uh, with one each uh, per uh, region. Uh, Anna Sedrati is going to represent uh, the African Wikimedians and Lukas Grachevsky is going to represent uh, the C region. Uh, each of them will have uh, a 20 minute presentation. And after we uh, finish with the presentation, so we'll have uh, a 20 minute uh, period for Q&A. Anas, if you're ready, I think you can start. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Kirill. Uh, I'm uh, really happy and glad to be uh, in uh, this panel. And it's really a great opportunity. I don't think it has happened before to have uh, two conferences that, that merge together for a session. And this is maybe one of the benefits of uh, having a, uh, online conferences. So as you rightly mentioned, I was initially planning to have my presentation for the week in Daba conference, but since the both conferences uh, agreed, we will have this discussion together. And I believe it's useful because the thematic that I'm going to present about is useful for all the communities and it's the thematic of uh, uh, regional hubs. Uh, so I will speak about the following subjects. First of all, I will introduce the work that I did about regional hubs by giving some background, general information. Then I will uh, explain exactly what was the research work that was done in terms of context, in terms of methodology, and also in terms of results. And also I will uh, provide a very brief overview because we don't have much time uh, about analysis, discussion, and also the conclusions and future ideas. And I would also like to apologize for the uh, interpreters because unfortunately I will need to speak quickly since it's only 20 minutes, but I will do my best to sure. not speak very fast. So I will, I will try to speak as slow as possible, but give as many insights as possible. Uh, since this presentation was actually intended for Wikimedia, I did not include a presentation of myself, but uh, I just will very briefly present myself. My name is Anas and uh, I am uh, from uh, Wikimedia Morocco user group. And yeah, it's my first participation in CE, although I know a lot of uh, people here. So general introduction, the regional hubs are one of the most important pillars of the Wikimedia 2030 strategy. And it is an idea that is discussed between all communities and movement stakeholders. So this is something that everybody likes to discuss and everybody thinks that they need to have in their own region. Uh, this presentation that I'm doing now is about a study that I did between June and July 2021. It was a study that uh, I applied for to get a grant from the Wikimedia strategy team. After that, they opened the, uh, the door for uh, ability to ask for a grant. And the reason why I wanted to do it was because I was feeling that there is almost no discussion that uh, this, uh, there is kind of a blockade currently and we don't see any activity going on from any, any side. It's either communities complaining or nothing happening from the foundation side. So I wanted to document this in a sort of, of study to show where we are. Uh, I did a survey of opinions of Arabic speaking communities uh, and it had three main thematics. First of all, I wanted to collect data, as much data as possible from uh, the community. The second, to understand the community's perception of the concept of regional hub, to understand what, what they think is a regional hub and how it should be. And then third, to analyze the results and provide recommendation because, as I said in the beginning, I felt that nothing was going on, nothing was happening. So I wanted to give a recommendation for action to be done. Of course, they shouldn't be followed, but at least it's something. So the interest in regional and thematic hubs 
uh, started already from the working group stage if we talk about the Wikimedia strategy. I know that it started even before because many uh, hubs were formed already in 2010, 2011. But if, if we talk about the strategy, the interest started from the working group stage and already four of the nine existing working groups included the idea in their recommendations, which is really big. Uh, thinking that uh, the working groups that were at that time had very specific thematics. For example, I was in advocacy working group, but we still concluded somehow that there should be uh, some kind of hubs, and it was the same also for other groups. So because there was this big interest in hubs, they had a place even in the final 10 recommendations. And there was the fourth recommendation that was about ensure equity in decision-making, included the, the hubs as part of it. And uh, later on, when the initiatives were made, there were 45 initiatives that were made out of the 10 recommendations. One initiative, which, we, which is initiative 25, was specifically dedicated to the Wikimedia hubs. And when I say Wikimedia hubs, I mean both regional and thematic hubs. But the work I did was specifically about, about regional hubs and specifically about the Arabic speaking region. Uh, so here you can see the different initiatives that were uh, taken after the recommendations were made. And you can see that some of them are actually prioritized. And among them, you can see here uh, within D hubs and then 25 regional thematic hubs. Maybe some of you will ask how this prioritization was made. So if you remember, there were a number of uh, strategy meetings that were happening and uh, many members of the community them and were voting as a result of the vote. So uh, we can say that uh, the many community members chose the hubs as a high priority initiative to be implemented. Uh, this is actually what I've been uh, saying, that there were global discussions about the hubs. Uh, but even if there were discussions, if even if there is interest, there is a need to clarify many aspects. Uh, and in these aspects, we have also to clarify what is a region. For example, Africa is an important region for the movement. The Arabic speaking world is an important region for the movement. But there are so many unclarities. We don't know if these are going to be the regions, if this is something else. And most importantly, who is going to uh, work on that and why? So here I give an example, the Arabic language, which is uh, uh, language of uh, one, one official language in, in Morocco. Uh, it's also an official language in 22 other countries. So it's a language that is spread through many countries. And this is a clear example of why a hub is needed for coordination and for many other things. Uh, there is a need, but also there is a desire. So people want to coordinate and, and do it together, but they don't know how to do and they don't know who should do what. Uh, but even if they don't know how to do, we should still involve them and involve the communities in these discussions which is actually uh, not very clear in the, in the current uh, status. Uh, regional hubs, again, as I mentioned, were emerged, uh, emerged with Wikimedia 2030, but they were initiated much earlier uh, in terms of cooperation. For example, the CEE uh, work that you are having has emerged much earlier than the strategy. The same for Ibercoop, for Wikifranca, even Wiki Arabia and all this. They, they were kind of natural when you have different regions and different countries, they come together and have a conference or have discussions. They didn't need to wait for the strategy, but the strategy, let's say, is something that uh, will try to take these spontaneous ideas and formalize them and have something formal and official for them that hopefully will be these hubs. So here, uh, if we go to my study, we have the Arabic speaking community which is one of the oldest communities since the Arabic Wikipedia was launched in 2003. Uh, currently, there are nine geographic user groups, but there are also many active people from different countries where there are not no user groups. And in the Arabic Wikipedia, there are more than 2 million people who are registered users. Of course, not of them are active, uh, but uh, uh, many of them have opened an account and registered. And there is a previous experience of cooperation at the regional level, in uh, the name of the Arabic com committee, which is a committee that was launched by the user groups uh, in order to start to initiate some kind of hub. So there is already an experience that did not conclude to have a hub, but that shows that there is a need and desire to have a hub. Uh, 
My study was done because uh, there was an absence of earlier research and studies on the topic. So there was a lack of information. And also because I wanted to search for ways to implement and develop regional hubs in the Arabic speaking region. And hopefully the ideas come in from here and the results could benefit also other regions that can do their own research because this depends a lot on the context. There were a lot of limitations when I did this work. First of all, the scope changed a lot. Uh, first, it was hubs just in general, then it became regional hubs, then it became only the region, uh, which is something good. But this means, again, that if you want to see your own region, you have to do your own study, because what I will provide is general insights, but they will need adjustments depending on the context. Uh, I worked on, uh, with the Arabic speaking region. I was first thinking about working with North Africa and the Middle East, but then Again, many people wanted just to discuss about the Arabic speaking region as they felt that this should be the focus of the hub. Uh, the quantity of the data and its level of representation was also a limitation. I wanted to have much more data, but there were so many limitations, for example, technical challenges. Many countries have issues with electricity, with internet, even with wars. So I cannot claim that this represents all the region and all the communities, but at least it represents those who had the possibility and had the will to provide information from their end. Uh, what I did was that I surveyed the opinions of interested community members through different means. Uh, I had one-on-one -on -one virtual mm. interviews. I wish they could be physical, but uh, it's not possible now. Uh, I had a big community survey with a lot of questions, detailed questions uh, that uh, was answered by a lot of people. And I did also quick short polls on Facebook, you know, these kind of polls where you just ask a quick yes, no question and you have uh, votes from people, yes or no. And uh, this was for three weeks in uh, June this year. Uh, I was informing and updating the communities through different means, mostly emails, but also village camp, social media, uh, telegram. I, I was at a time maybe disturbing people, but I, th I think that it was needed if you wanted to have a uh, uh, good uh, data and good uh, insights from everyone and so that nobody can say that we did not know that this was happening. Uh, this is an example of the survey. So you can see here some questions uh, and also answers. It was in Google forums. This is something that I didn't mention here, but I don't, there, there were no complaints about Google forums in general, because I know that in general people would complain about it. But here I'm asking questions like, do you need a regional hub? Yes, no. And uh, sorts of questions that we can go a little bit deeper very soon. So these are the results. There were 78 participants from the region in all these uh, surveys together among which roughly 30% were women or identified themselves as women. Uh, 25 participants answered the longer survey, which is, I think, a good achievement, given that the survey was really long. I had 10 one-on-one -on -one interview meetings with the duration of one hour each with those who were interested, and this was really insightful. If you go to the report that uh, I will send the link later, you will see that I translated all the content of uh, this interview so you can read it. Of course, it's anonymized, so there are no names, but it can be interesting for those who really want to dig in the uh, subject. And then 43 people participated on Facebook during uh, the quick polls that uh, were happening. So in the survey, there were many questions. I will not go through all of them because of uh, obviously lack of time, but I will explain some of the points that were discussed. So for example, I was asking, what do you define as your region? And there were different answers. Some people were answering, my region is the Arabic speaking region. Some other were saying my region is specifically the Middle East. Some other people were saying specifically North Africa. So here already we can see that the definition of the region would be problematic in, in, uh, in this case. And, and this will be happening across all the regions. And this is why we need specific work for every region. Also, uh, the question, why do we need a hub? This one actually was rather well answered and there were no, let's say, disagreements about it because most of people wanted to have a hub and they also defined good roles for the hub. For example, improving the communication, the coordination, to document, to support, to hire. This is also important because we don't have stuff like other uh, regions would say. Also to improve content, not, not in writing, but somehow to provide the support needed so that the content could be improved. Uh, also, one of the questions that were, were really answered a lot in the survey was who will lead the hub? 
And there was also disagreement there. Well, will it be the Wikimedia Foundation? Will it be the communities themselves? Will it be a collaboration between both? It was something that uh, uh, will need probably clarification. And this is related also to the other question about how independent will the hub be? And if it needs to report to any entity, because you know that the concept of hub itself it comes from decentralization. And when you have decentralization, do you really need to report to a central entity or not? This is not answered question, but there were really nice insights from the survey about it. In the one-on-one -on -one interviews, and of course the picture is not related to it, but it's the only, uh, let's say, open source picture I found that was showing a one-on-one -on -one interview. Uh, there were all, also similar questions, uh, but much deeper answers since we had time to develop the answers. So why do we need to have for decentralization, for efficiency, for support, and for many, many other areas? But there was a, an agreement that the hub was needed. And also, what is the current view towards the regional hub? Uh, most of people who were in the interview said that they wanted to be, uh, they wanted to have it community driven, that it should be legally recognized. It should be somehow like a mini Wikimedia Foundation for the region. And it should be a structured body, not like a user group that is not really structured. And this is also very related to the region because we only have user groups. So people are tired of the, this volunteering uh, organizational uh, scheme, but maybe it's different in other regions. Uh, also, some roles of the hubs were discussed and uh, the question of next steps, that is an important one, was also discussed during these interviews. So here are some of the uh, results in the graphic form. This is, comes from the Facebook poll. Do we need a regional hub? The answer was pretty clear. <laughs> yes, most of people answered. Uh, some people answered no, and some wanted clarity, but 84% uh, said that we need a regional hub. Uh, also, there was a disagreement if it should be one hub or many, but at least there was the expression that there is a need. Should, who should start a regional hub? Here it was a little bit split between those saying it should be the foundation, those saying it should be the communities, and those saying it should be both. But even if we say both, then to which extent and who will do what, this is something that needs to be digged into. Uh, next part was how many hubs should be in the region. As you see here, most of people said more than one hub. And in uh, this question, not necessarily all the answers that said more than one hub wanted to say two regional hubs. Some people said we need one regional hub and also one thematic hubs in, in, in the region, for example. And some other people said, no, we need two regional hubs or even more, maybe one for North Africa and one for the Middle East. So this is up to discussion. And most importantly, because we come back again to the same point of, of governance, who will decide about this? And is it just that people from North Africa will come together and start their hub? or do they need to discuss with, with other uh, stakeholders? This is a question that needs to be answered. Uh, how independent should the hub be? Few people thought that it should to be totally independent, and many people thought that it should be re reporting to the Wikimedia Foundation, but this depends again on which extent the, the reporting should be. So may maybe some people would say they should only report financially. Some other people would, would say they should report totally in everything. Uh, so the reporting to the Wikimedia Foundation, 87% doesn't necessarily mean that it should be under the foundation in everything. And again, this is very region and context dependent. So maybe a lot of people in the region think that they need support or supervision from the foundation. Maybe this is not the case in, in other regions of the world. And this is again what, why I think it's important to do such studies everywhere. So if we go to the points that were mostly agreed, First of all, there is no discussion that uh, everyone in the region says that the region needs a hub and also that the scope should be the Arabic speaking region. There was clarity from the beginning. They didn't want me to include other areas or other countries, only Arabic speaking region. There was also an agreement that the AFCOM should clarify the status of regional hubs as soon as possible because there were some people who wanted to apply for a hub status and uh, they were denied by the AFCOM who told them you can apply for a user group. This is what we have for the moment. Uh, also, there is an agreement that it should be the communities that should have the last word in the decisions related to the hubs. And also there is an agreement that both online and offline communities should benefit from the hub. Uh, there are some points that need discussions uh, and are not really clear for the moment. 
roles and responsibilities, how the structure will be. Will it be something physical? Will it be something online? How many people will work, etc. The governance, who will lead the hub, uh, what will be the structure also? This is These are related questions. And the relationship of the hub with the other stakeholders in the movement, either with the communities or with the affiliates or with the foundation or other stakeholders. This is These are points that need to be discussed. And there were some points that were really disagreed very strongly from two different extremes. The geographical scope covered by a regional center or regional hub. What is the definition of a region and who decides on it? Uh, okay, will Morocco be in African hub? Will Morocco be in Arabic speaking hub? Will Morocco be in Mediterranean hub? For example, there might be sometimes people from the same country who have different opinions. Who, why, who will have the, the final decision within them? And also what is mostly disagreed is the concrete next steps, next steps to start the implementation. Some people will just say, let's wait and see. Some other people say we will start and some other people will just go to the foundation and ask them to start. But there is a disagreement how to do the first steps and who will do it and who will make the decision on these steps to be done. And also the physical location. This was the, the for me the funniest question. <laughs> I would say that everyone was putting the, their city and their country as the place where they wanted the headquarters to be. But there needs to be some kind of uh, discussion involving other metrics and parameters else than what is the place that you like. Because the question was not what's your favorite city, but rather where do you want to have to be located in. Uh, here I try to summarize some of the challenges and recommendations for the future. I don't think that I will be able to go through all of them because of course of lack of time, but I encourage you very strongly to uh, read the report. There is a very, very big table that I have uh, put on the, on the report where I have gathered these challenges and suggested who should be responsible of them, who should own them, and what can be the way forward. Of course, the way forward that I'm suggesting should not necessarily be followed, but maybe it should be discussed and maybe there should be some actions. The most important why I did this report is because I thought that there is no activity and we need activity. And this is uh, uh, an attempt to have a little bit of activity going here so that we can move and start the implementation of the hub. The, the first uh, point for me is the most important, which is the overall responsibility over the process. Who is the responsible over this process of regional hubs in the world, not in each region? Maybe in each region it will be the communities. But who is the overall responsible of the process overall in, in the world? Who will be held accountable if there is a problem with a specific hub, for example? Uh, there are also many, many other questions, but unfortunately, I don't have time to present all of them here. You can see them and we can discuss them when we will have time for discussion, uh, like the governance, legal questions the status of the hub in the movement that is not existing and you cannot create a hub now legally within the, the, the framework that is in the Wikimedia movement, for example, now. We have only user groups, chapters, and thematic organizations, etc. So to conclude, uh, the hub's implementation is widely supported in the Arabic-speaking region, although, of course, there are many disagreed points. The Wikimedians have many opinions and ideas on this subject. Some agree and some disagree but it, they have opinions and people are eager to discuss this item. Uh, this research highlighted several challenges and obstacles that must be solved, and it also included suggestions for way forward. This is something that we do a lot as Wikipedians and Wikimedians. We not only want to show a problem, but we want to give suggestions about how to solve it and discuss the suggestion, of course. It is important, in my opinion, to conduct similar studies in other regions and context of the movement. This is very, very specific to the Arabic speaking context, but we need to have insights from other contexts so that we can make all these results together and try to move forward with the, the, uh, the hubs. So it's important to uh, give the community a feeling of ownership of this in order to be able to follow up the implementation process. Uh, this was actually all from me. I have some readings here. I will put, of course, the slides on, on comments so uh, you can find the links. I will also find, put the links in the chat. And I'm very happy to discuss with you either during this discussion uh, that we'll have uh, in this panel or also after if you want us to have a specific meeting or, or any, any discussion. I think that this is a very interesting subject and I'm actually very happy that uh, there will be, uh, I think on the 27th of November, 
a workshop just dedicated for, for hubs. So I invite all of you who are interested in this to, to attend. I think registration will start next week. Uh, and that's it from me. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Anas. Uh, thank you for providing uh, uh, the African perspective on this uh, very important topic. We already have a couple of questions in the chat, so I will invite you to review them and see if you can uh, answer there. Or we can go after uh, Lucas' presentation and uh, 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 answer them later. Uh, okay, so let's move on to uh, the CE perspective. Uh, we have uh, Lukasz Garczewski, who is going to tell something more about what uh, uh, is done within the CE community with regards to community and strategy. Uh, hey, everybody. Good morning. Uh, I will just check in my other window to see if everything is okay on the African side. And Irina says, okay. So I think we can uh, proceed here. Uh, so I'll start with a brief uh, introduction. My name is Lukas Garczewski. I am a longtime Wikipedian, although I do say I am a retired Wikipedian because I don't edit much anymore. Um, I have been the, um, the co-founder and first president of Wikimedia Poland and um, have now returned to the Wikimedia movement in a different role of um, chief operating officer or executive director um, of Wikimedia Poland. Uh, and in this capacity, I have been helping uh, a international group of people from the Central and Eastern European region uh, to um, establish a hub uh, together and create something that would uh, make international collaboration um, and support easier. Um, so um, I'll start by making a couple call outs to uh, Anas's presentation because I found it interesting and somewhat somewhat funny uh, that there are so many similarities between our efforts. So first of all, uh, where is Central Eastern Europe? Uh, and the answer is somewhere in Europe. Um, the borders here, are very fuzzy and uh, multiple countries belong to more than one region. Um, you know, Austria is in some sense Central Eastern Europe historically, uh, partially culturally, uh, but linguistically and also in terms of development, it's more Western Europe. So it's kind of in both um, the Balkans and Greece. Is that Central Eastern Europe or is it Southern Europe, um, a different region? And then Turkey, is that Central Eastern Europe or no? So there are a lot of, uh, a lot of questions about where exactly the borders are here. Uh, and now um, for our intents and purposes, the answer is we don't really care that much um, because the mission is uh, country agnostic in a sense. So we're, we'll, we are all building and supporting the building of free knowledge uh, in this region. And the fact that, you know, whether this country belongs to it or no, doesn't really matter that much. So um, I understand the complexities um, linguistically and culturally that uh, Anas was talking about. Um, we are taking a more, eh, we'll see uh, approach. Uh, and I think if it's, um, uh, it fits for us, um, for, at least for now. Uh, now, before I go further, I'll, I'll stop and talk a little bit about why there is this confusion about um, how to move forward and who should do it. And it was very clear from, uh, from the previous pre presentation also that um, this idea of creating hubs um, is very strong and popular and people um, most people say, yes, we need some sort of regional collaboration system. But then when you ask the question, okay, so how should we set it up or who should set it up? The answer is, we don't, we don't know. Maybe these people or maybe, maybe those. Um, I think um, the, the, the mistake that the movement has made here is uh, providing a very clear recommendation in the Wikimedia 2030 strategy of um, the need to establish hubs. So that, that is what puts the 
idea of hubs on the map. Um, that is what what planted it in people's heads. Uh, if, <clears throat> if, if the movement as a whole is saying, let's have hubs, uh, everybody kind of perks up and goes, okay, so what do we do now? And the problem uh, is there was no follow-up. Um, there is no clear definition of what a hub is and what it should do. Uh, so uh, we are left with making things up as we go. Um, there are different ideas. And we're talking about regional hubs today, but you need to also um, uh, remember that there are there's this idea in parallel of Thematic hubs. Um, Wikimedia Sweden is working on a on a glam hub, um, which is topic based and not not geography based. And there are others within the Wikimedia movement who are working on language based hubs, um, which are also not geography based. Um, so uh, this is in a uh, system governance um, uh, sense a mess, uh, and we are making things up as we go. Uh, which is bad, but there's also the, a, a good side to it, which is uh, Wikimedians are fairly good at making things up as we go. Uh, the whole um, Wiki approach to um, building things, I think is applicable to hubs. And as we're building, um, it, it so happens that, that both um, Anis's attempts and what we're doing in Central Eastern Europe are the similar stage, which is we've done or are doing some research and preparing for the next steps. And uh, similarly to what uh, Anas has done in his region, uh, we also conducted um, some surveys. In addition to that, we also did interviews, which are uh, which were one to one um, conversations. The important bit there was that we had a, uh, a, a common set of questions for each interviewee uh, and the uh, the reason we're doing that is because there are more than 40 entities in uh, the region and these are both this I need to move it um, so the chapters user groups um, communities without an affiliate or user group. Um, and, and then, you know, this part, which we say, okay, is, the, is this CE? Are they interested in working together? Uh, let's reach out and see. Um, so, uh, so there's a lot of people, a lot of different, um, uh, different communities, different organizations. And what I want to uh, bring your attention to is this is a sort of formalization um, I'll say hierarchy, but that, that's not the right word here. Uh, formalization hierarchy in the sense that these are more formalized, these are less formalized, and the, these are completely informal. Um, now, one of the, um, the, the reasons that the CE um, uh, community or the people engaged in this work has have decided to focus their efforts on building a hub is because we have very different levels of Wikimedia organizational development. Um, we have countries in which there are established hubs, which have been um, functioning for 15 years or more. Uh, and we have language communities and, and, and countries where uh, Wikimedia work is very needed to preserve our cultural heritage and to, to preserve the language and, and, uh, um, and give people the free knowledge that they want and need. Uh, and by working together, we can um, prevent <laughs> these uh, smaller communities for, from repeating the mistakes that the older hubs have made a couple of times already. Uh, so we are trying to shorten the uh, time it takes to um, uh, to efficiently to start efficiently supporting the growth of free knowledge uh, in those countries where. Uh, there is a smaller community or, or, or not yet a well-established uh, organization. Um, now, coming back to this notion of building things as we go, um, Anas has asked a couple, um, several very good questions in his uh, presentation. Um, 
and highlighted the doubts or or, or lack of decision makers. I think the la the one of the last slides where he said he showed um, a proposal for who should do what um, is uh, is a very good uh, attempt to uh, make this process be more um, more active because uh, one of the problems is we've had this. Um, the strategic recommendation for a while and nothing, nothing's been happening, uh, which was clear from his presentation and is also the reason why we've started building our own hub uh, in Central Eastern Europe. Um, my uh, strong suggestion to uh, our friends in Africa is um, don't stop with the question who does who will do it or how will we do it. Rather, it is much um, quicker to develop a proposal and say, here's an idea, what do you think about it? Um, and that's what we that's that's what we have done. And that's what we will um, be presenting um, uh, at the EC meeting on Sunday to our friends um, from the larger, larger C uh, community. The reason for that is when you have group decision making, and no clear decider, um, it is very hard to come up with a with an idea with a proposal. So if, if you think this work is in, is important, uh, either create a proposal or find people who are willing, a small group of people who are willing to um, to draft the proposal, and then ask what do you think. Making corrections is much more uh, much much easier in a in a collaborative process than writing something from uh, from scratch. Um, Okay, so now a couple of words about what this uh, hub will uh, will do. That our proposal, if you will, uh, for the Central Eastern Europe. Um, so the idea we had is a service-based organization. So what what does that mean? Um, that means that the goal of the central eastern european hub at least at the at the very beginning will be to provide services to other organizations and communities in the region and by services we mean we we mean something concrete and if the first example uh, that we already have in place is um, zoom access so if you don't want to uh, be cut off after 40 minutes and want to want to do a, a an event online of any sort connected to wikimedia and you are you don't have a chapter you don't want to buy it out of your own pocket which you shouldn't have to do then there's a form you apply and you get the uh, get the access completely free of charge so anybody in central eastern europe uh, can uh, can now do that and one of the chapters in this case community poland is sponsoring that uh, that service and as you can probably imagine uh, we can have multiple uh, services of varying level of, levels of complexity. Um, borrowing Zoom access is fairly simple, uh, but maybe some chapters need help with um, producing um, and ordering uh, leaflets or badges or t-shirts. Um, if five chapters want to have t-shirts, it makes sense to order, to have one, make one order for all of them uh, rather than every single one one doing a, a separate order because that's usually cheaper uh, and then if a, uh, a user group doesn't have an office and cannot it doesn't have a place to store these badges or t-shirts or other things that they want to give to their uh, volunteers and, and wikipedians then maybe that's stored in a central um, location and then sent out uh, on their behalf so these are the services, very concrete, uh, very uh, closely tied to the uh, Wikimedia mission and, and what we need to do, um, and available to everybody um, administered by, uh, by the hub and paid for by the hubs or, or its members. Uh, this approach uh, has the advantage of uh, providing needed help <clears throat> immediately. Uh, and not uh, stopping at this um, at this philo philosophical level of how do we structure it and, and so forth because we we kind of know what is uh, required and what <clears throat> excuse me and what different uh, groups would need to uh, to grow and to 
use tools, um, digital and physical, to spread uh, the idea of free knowledge. So we we focus on that. And we believe that this will be, this will have an immediate effect um, on the quality of um, participation in the Wikimedia movement, especially in the smaller communities, smaller languages, and less developed regions. Um, and so I will now show you, uh, this is very early, um, but this is a, uh, a mind map that my colleague Natalia Shapram uh, has posed uh, that shows the challenges and needs uh, of Central Eastern European uh, communities. And uh, you can see things like we need administrative help and the challenges, administra administrative work takes a lot of capacity. So how could the, uh, the hub help with that? What does that actually mean preparing reports? Do, do we, can we prepare some sort of template? or maybe help out in a different way. Uh, maybe it's easier for um, the local group to uh, write in their own language and then we pay for a translation. There's various possible solutions to this and same goes for uh, every other um, kind of strand, every other point on this, uh, on this list. Uh, and we will, uh, as we continue our research and interviews with um, all of the uh, groups within our region, as I said, there's more than 40, um, we will pick the most painful points and try to solve them, or at least lessen the pain. Um, and I also wanted to draw everybody's attention to uh, this part. Uh, for the Central Eastern European crowd, I will be talking about this in more de detail um, at a research session but uh, to kind of highlight what we should uh, be thinking about is not to introduce more bureaucracy, uh, but rather make it easier. Uh, so this is a fear that I share. We're adding a layer of organizational structure. And so let's make it easier and not, uh, not more difficult. Um, let's try to have equal access to, to the support. So how do we and make it so that the bigger organizations don't, don't get all of the support, but rather we support the ones who need it most, which is usually the smaller communities and groups. Um, and sharing information is a big one. It is a endemic problem with, in the entire movement. There's too much things happening and filtering is impossible. So how do we solve that? I actually have, uh, I hope that one of the hubs, maybe us, maybe uh, the future Arabic uh, hub, maybe somebody else solves this problem and, sh and shares the solution with, uh, with everybody else. So meetings like this one um, make a lot of sense and, uh, and let's uh, collaborate also between the hubs uh, and share solutions uh, so that we don't, uh, you know, mess up. Uh, but, uh, one final note that I wanted to share is uh, whatever we build, whatever we build in Central Europe, Central Eastern Europe, uh, Africa, or anywhere else, please let's not think about this as a one solution forever. Let's think it. Let's think about every organizational entity in wiki terms. So we're building it, and if it doesn't work, we'll have to change it. Let's figure out how that change will happen and uh, and then see if we need to introduce it. Um, once you get into that way of thinking, the wiki thinking about organizations, notice that it is it becomes much easier to say, this is what we want to try. Th this this solution, this way of of setting it up is is a first attempt. And if it doesn't work out, we're going to change it. And here is what we need to check to say it works or it doesn't work. If you do that, you're effectively setting up, setting up an experiment. And uh, my hope is that that approach will lower the barrier to make a decision as a group. Because it's much easier to say, okay, we'll try this for six months or a year. 
and then ch change it if we need to, than it is to say, yes, this is how we want to work forever. So don't think about forever. Think about the first edit and the next edit to the organization and go from there. Um, I think that's all I wanted to uh, present, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. And I will be checking both the Central Eastern European chat and the African platform uh, and try to not go crazy. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Lucas. Uh, so not, now let's move on to the Q&A part of the session. We have 15 minutes. Uh, I see two raised hands. Uh, uh, first, we'll have Anton and then Lars. Anton, please go ahead. Uh, hello. So uh, regarding the question of uh, where should uh, the capital of this uh, regional hub be, I would uh, suggest that it uh, should not be uh, chosen by some voting uh, uh, because everyone would vote for uh, uh, his own uh, city, for his own uh, country, and in the end some people will remain offended that they were not chosen. So. Uh, I think that uh, there should be some uh, criteria to uh, elect such uh, a place uh, and uh, a city and a country which uh, meets those criteria the best should be uh, chosen. Uh, those criteria, I guess, should be first uh, that the capital of this uh, regional hub should be in the most democratic uh, country of the uh, region so that this regional hub doesn't experience uh, any uh, political uh, pressure, any problems with uh, government uh, bureaucracy, uh, no legal problems, uh, uh, problems with registering an uh, organization and uh, so on second, uh, it would be at least uh, at least somewhere in the geographical center of the region uh, because uh, uh, people uh, from different sides of this region should uh, have uh, an easy possibility to get there. For example, if you put uh, uh, is this uh, capital of regional hub, African uh, regional hub in uh, uh, Morocco, then pe people from, uh, for example, Kuwait will uh, have a hard time to uh, get there. And also there should be uh, a criteria that uh, there, uh, it will, it uh, should be the easiest place uh, to uh, hire uh, qualified uh, people for the office of this hub. Uh, accountants, office managers, uh, project managers, uh, lawyers, uh, and uh, so on. And also, uh, it should be an easy way to get uh, some uh, uh, accommodation uh, there. Uh, in case of uh, uh, CE hub, I would suggest that uh, 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 first uh, the capital of CE hub should be in the European Union for uh, a lot of uh, reasons. Uh, 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 for example, that uh, people from any other uh, EU country can uh, work uh, there, uh, despite being. Uh, uh, I think we're getting uh, carried away a bit. Uh, can you, Anton, please focus on uh, some specific question that you have for both Anas or Lukas? Uh, okay, these are just comments. So, uh, in general, uh, I will summarize in one sentence. Uh, the capital of hubs should be not voted for, but uh, uh, chosen after uh, researching each of the possibilities. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Let's move on to Lars. Lars, please. Uh, 
Go ahead. So I, I just wanted to say that I like Luca's idea of focusing on services and providing services. This also opens the door that you don't need to cover a specific area, for example, cover every Arab speaking country or or the whole of Middle East and exactly what is that. But you could just name the hubs after the city and have one hub Warsaw and another hub Tangier. And then maybe some of the uh, uh, Eastern part of the Arabic world will be offended by, by Tangier being a hub and they will set up a second hub in, in Dubai, for example. Uh, and that's not really a problem because any Arabic speaking person who needs help can get services from the one closest. Uh, so that's just a, a reflection on, on these problems and how to maybe avoid them. So um, to, to answer uh, or comment on, on, on thank you, I, I appreciate the, the comment, Lars, but I'll say that we need um, both um, the service, the, the sort of simple small steps service approach that I mentioned, but we also need um, what Anas was calling for, which is a answer to the structural questions. And the reason we need that is because one of the possible um, paths of evolution for hubs is for them to become grant makers. So the, the grants, the, the, the hubs, the regional hubs would, would get money and then would redistribute them to the, uh, the organizations and communities in the region. And then the question of what's the region <laughs> becomes important. So uh, or it becomes more important than than it is with a, with a purely service uh, based approach. Um, so um, so I think we need to work on both in parallel um, and in different um, in different groups. So it it's uh, who can apply in that you would in Warsaw not receive applications from Spain, but you would receive uh, applications from uh, Bulgaria. Uh, but those people can also apply from another hub that is uh, maybe in Dubai or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, if they have some connection to that. So, or, or to a thematic hub in for museums yeah. in Stockholm. Um, so there will always be an overlap where you can apply for, for services or uh, grants. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, so I will, I will, I will now... Um, I'm, I'm looking at the questions we got from the African platform. Um, and I want to answer one that maybe I didn't make as clear as I should have in my presentation. Florence asks, um, who would handle requests for services? Is it volunteers or is it staff? Um, and the answer is mainly staff, I think. My um, my and preference within the movement as a whole is to take the boring stuff from the volunteers and make it be staff-based. And that's how we solve the access to Zoom issue. There's a, uh, a, a paid, paid staff person who does uh, administrative work and also this, um, doling out Zoom access uh, and, and things like packaging and, uh, and ordering t-shirts or ordering various uh, physical goods is also not something that I would delegate to volunteers, but a service is also training, right? Um, a service could also be providing um, mentoring or, or training services uh, on a number of different topics from uh, technical wiki stuff, uh, templates or Lua, to uh, mediation and conflict resolution on the other side. Um, and those uh, types of services, I think, can and perhaps even should be volunteer-based because um, uh, that's going to help us scale uh, much faster and, and provide a good service. So uh, that's to you, Florence. Thank you. Uh, I would like just to add some things on what you have said, Lucas, that uh, are really important and also relate to what was mentioned earlier by Anton and by Lash. So it's true 
that uh, one of the main reasons why people want to have a hub, at least according to the survey that I did, was that people wanted to have services and they had the specific needs. For example, you have a technical challenge and you are a new Wikimedians and you have no clue that there is a foundation that exists or that someone is working at some specific department. So the hub is something that is closer to you and can deliver services to you. But in, in our specific region, uh, not only in the Arabic speaking countries, but in all of Africa and in many other regions, we, we don't have uh, groups with staff. We have user groups and we are only volunteers that were writing in Wikipedia. And someday we said, oh, let's create a user group. But this is not what we are doing in, in, in our lives. This is just something I can quit my user group tomorrow if I become tired and have many other things to do in life. So uh, th th this, don't. yes, no, I, I don't think I will. But on the same time, there is a big, uh, not, I would not say misunderstanding, but sometimes a lot of responsibilities are given on volunteers. Uh, you are a volunteer, you write articles, yes, but you, you are a volunteer, you are not supposed to uh, organize a conference and buy flight tickets and uh, book hotels. And this is something we did. So I know what I'm talking about. Uh, and the problem is that when it becomes long term, it's even more problematic. So this is why at one moment people will ask that we they need to have staff. And the staff maybe can do service across all the region. But to go back to what you have said, Lars, because it's important, I don't think we can go directly from a situation where we only have user groups with volunteer in, in, volunteers in one region to uh, different staff in different countries. It will become a bit, uh, maybe maybe a bit too much in the beginning. So th there needs to be some some kind of agreement who will do what and in, in, in what place. It should not maybe be centralized. Maybe they can be dis distributed stuff, but we cannot have the same service or the same role in two places of the region uh, in the beginning, uh, I think, because it's, it's really complex. I al also wrote in the chat that we have political problems. There are not many, uh, like there, there isn't a lot of freedom of expression, for example. So many people are afraid to have a legal entity because Sometimes the authorities will ask them, can you edit Wikipedia? So in many places, we, we have user groups with volunteers because of this. And this is why some kind of support is, is needed. Okay, thank you, Anas. Uh, we have uh, raised hands uh, by Jaco and Clara. But before moving on to their questions, uh, uh, there was uh, a question uh, with different uh, answers uh, in the chat about the capital of the uh, C hub. There was uh, a comment uh, that uh, we won't uh, really have uh, a capital. Uh, Farhat mentioned Istanbul as a city with good connections. Then Shamat mentioned it's better to have something more to the West. Uh, what's your opinion on this, Lukas? Um, doesn't matter. Uh, we are a digital movement uh, and we are vastly distributed. My organization um, is currently seven people, if my count is right, uh, seven staff, uh, and we are all in different cities. We, we didn't see each other for two years and it worked fine. Uh, it does not, uh, does, does not matter. The concept of capital is useful for countries. It is not useful for Wikimedia organizations, I think. Uh, thank you. Uh, we have some time for uh, Jacob and Clara. Jacob, please go ahead. Uh, sorry, uh, I feel a little bit like a bad cop saying this, but uh, uh, with, the, with the conference that is organized uh, this way, so many people wanting to discuss this issue and, and attending uh, a session that lasts an hour, I think we should all have discipline to only ask questions and not give huge elaborations of what we feel, uh, what we would do, what, you know, shared knowledge is great, but it's not adequate to share it in very, very limited time that we give in. So I, I would just also cut myself down to minimum and ask super uh, practical question because I'm kind of impressed by uh, what Anas uh, kind of pulled individually in his region. And I wanted to, to ask uh, if he can approximate what amount of time it took him as individual independent researcher 
to come up with the proposal, to get support, to conduct research, and to get to this level to be able to present it in the kind of international situation. Because I'm, I'm really interested of this uh, individual uh, possibility to influence larger dynamics of, of uh, region and, and potential uh, collaboration. Thank you. Thank you, Jaco. Uh, Lukas and us have that something? Or we can go with Clara. Clara, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, sure. When, when you were speaking, I was uh, thinking uh, about one question, and I think you've covered it before. Uh, just like how to balance like this ex uh, expectable need of service, <laughs> uh, uh, and on the other other hand, like openly like seeking consensus on a truly regional sense of the hub. I mean. For me, the hub should be something that's that is connecting the region. We don't want just to create a group of administrative assistant for the region. So how to balance these two expectable like points or these two, two mainstreams? Uh, according to the discussions that, that I had, and again, I maybe I'm focusing too much on the regional hubs, but there are also the thematic hubs. So maybe thematic hubs would offer a lot of services in the thematics that they are working on. And the regional hubs should be some kind of point of contact or uh, the place where you have most of information about what is happening elsewhere. So let's suppose I am from Moroccan user group and I will organize, I don't know, I want to organize something about GLAM. I have no clue about GLAM and museums. I will discuss with the regional hub of the, I don't know, North Africa, and they will, they don't have the expertise themselves, but they know so much about the movement. So they will tell me, oh, there will be maybe a hub in Sweden, thematic hub about GLAM. So let's arrange the contact or something like this. Maybe they can do this, this sort of, of coordination, but I don't think it's expected that each regional hub will have someone who will be expert, I don't know, in technical matters of Wikidata and someone who will be expert of uh, uh, Wikisource and someone who is expert in MediaWiki. Maybe those also will need to have their own hub, technical hub or thematic hub. This, this is my view, but I would say that a regional hub is mostly for coordination, not, not necessarily to offer the service, but to know who offers the service and connect you with this mm -hmm. person. Yep. Uh, and, and there is currently an effort going on uh, by Wikimedia uh, Germany and uh, Wikimedia Belgium and others, um, which is called Capacity Exchange. If you go to Meta and look for that, um, I would highly encourage you to follow because that is a, one possible solution to this directory of services, um, w which could in, in, uh, in the future become global. Um, and I also have a couple of questions that I think, which I think are interesting and important from uh, the uh, the African platform. Both are for you, Anas. If you could briefly uh, reply. So first question is, how have global communities responded to your research? Ah, that's a, a good, good, good question. Well, I didn't have a real response. It was mostly acknowledgement that people have read it, some people thanking. Mm -hmm. And I've been presenting in, in conferences. So I presented in Wiki Arabia, and this is my second presentation. And I will also present in uh, the Francophonic uh, conference that will be in, in two weeks. Uh, I think that maybe the information in the report is too much and I acknowledge it, but I think it will need some time. Then we can mm -hmm. have discussions. I, I sent a link on the, on the chat for a workshop, but I think that at one moment, we will need other researchers from other areas. And then maybe those who are involved in different researches in diff different areas can come together and, and have some brainstorming or, and, yep. or discussion. Thank you. And the, the other one I have is um, I'm reading. Uh, I was interested in your statement about people being tired of volunteering. 
um, and the structure re structure required by user groups. Can you tell us more about that? Absolutely, I can talk hours about this, but I will I will try <laughs> to be brief. So so I, I had in Wiki Arabia a presentation with my colleague Reda. Unfortunately, it's in Arabic, but there is a video related to it about burnout of volunteers in administrative tasks. So the idea with, with the, the Wikimedia projects in the beginning and volunteering was that you would volunteer because you would like to be neutral and, you know, all, all these things. But now volunteering with all these structures became many, many other administrative things that need to be done. For example, sometimes, and I'm talking about the context that we have a lot in Africa, you are the one who is responsible of reading all the emails as a contact person. You have to coordinate and create different meetings. You, it's simple t tasks, but they easily take the, many hours every week. Then if you organize a conference and probably the conference organizers know about this, it takes a lot of time. And sometimes the problematic becomes that someone would be held accountable because they are the head of the affiliate or because they are at the leadership. Some other people would expect that this person will do that work, and uh, on the other on the other side, uh, according to, for example, agreements with the Afcon, user groups are very informal, and there is no requirement that you have to have I don't know proper governance or do some specific structure. So most of people who would do this, they do it just because of ethical considerations, because they want a group to be organized, they want to be nice, and they volunteer to to do it. But it becomes easily an obligation and. There is a big risk that at the end you just burn out because so many things are happening and you have to answer this person and you have to maybe have a workshop with that one. And it's very, very easy that if you are not careful, it becomes too much. And, and I will, this is a guess, but, but I'm fairly sure that it's a, a good guess. There's no easy process to hand off uh, duties to others. Okay. There is no process because nobody is interested. Why would they do this for free? So you, yes. you become kind of uh, stranded in stuck. Your, yeah. Oh, yes, you're you're stuck in the own thing that you created. Yeah. Nobody wants yeah. to take over. Um, yeah. Thank you. Are, any, are there any other uh, questions, Carol? Uh, not from uh, the participants in this session. Uh, okay. If there are no questions uh, on the platform for Wiki in Dava. Yeah. Then I, I think, think we answered most of them. Okay, thank you. Uh, then I think we can uh, finish this session. We are already we have already run out of time. I would like to thank you both for your uh, presentations, your talks, and uh, can I can I just add one a one one sentence comment to the end? Yeah. Um, please let's focus on the big picture. We're all Wikipedians. We can murder every subject to death by looking at details, please let's not do that with helps. Let's, let's focus on the big pictures. It's not going to be perfect at the start, uh, but uh, practice letting go, okay? Um, and, uh, and let go of the issues that you think are interesting, but maybe not as important. And if we do that, we'll move uh, much faster and, uh, and correct them as, as we go. Thank you. Thank you, Lucas, for the advice. So uh, now we're going to have an intermediate break, uh, which will end in uh, 52 minutes from now. And then we're going to continue with the conference.